Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Central. If you're new here, my name is Shayla, and today we're reviewing Krayaliki 13 Year. But before we get into the video, I just want to give a quick Patreon shout out to Saxon Masinga. Thank you so much for the support. So I've got some history for you today, but if you want to skip around to other parts of the video, there's timestamps in the description box below. And if you enjoy whiskey reviews, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos. Craigalaki means Rocky Hill, and it sits on the cliff that overlooks the River Spey, and it's located in the center of Speyside. In 1891, it was founded by Peter Mackey and Alexander Edward. Mackey already owned Lagavulin, but he needed another distillery for his White Horse blend, and they began building the distillery in 1891. It was built by the famous architect Charles Doig. The original plan for Craigalaki was that it would be light and fruity, even being described as having a pineapple note in the early days of the distillery. In the early 1900s, Alexander Edward left his share of the distillery to Mackey, and White Horse Distillers became the main owner of Craigalaki. In the late 1990s, White Horse merged with DCL, which would eventually become Diageo, but this was quickly sold off to Bacardi, who still owns the distillery today. In 2004, the very first single malt from Craigalaki was released, and 10 years later, in 2014, they released the 13, 17, and 23-year-old. They're less well-known than a lot of other space sides because before 2004, they were only used in the White Horse blend. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the production at Craig Allakey. Craig Allakey produces over 4 million liters per year, the majority of which goes into the Dewar's blends. They get their malt from the Glenisk maltings, and they kill it using a heavy fuel oil that makes a certain sulfuric note. The distillery has two wash stills and two spirit stills, and uses worm tubs. That's what I covered in last week's video. I'll link it in a card up here if you want to find out more. This is a fruity style, but unlike many Speysides, this is a heavier whiskey because of the quick condensation from the worm tubs. Alright, so let's get into the details of this whiskey. This bottle will run you about $55, it's owned by Bacardi, and it's located in the Speyside region of Scotland. It's 13 years old, 46% ABV, made from 100% malted barley. It's aged in a mix of ex-bourbon and ex-sherry casks, and it's non-colored and non-chill filtered. All right. I'm gonna pour a drum of this, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and I'll be right back. All right, I've let this open up for about 10 minutes. Let's go in the nose. So the first thing I get is it it's reminding me of Aberfeldy, that kind of honey note that you get on Aberfeldy. It smells a lot like this. Uh, it just is a little bit heavier though, kind of like a more dense uh, version of Aberfeldy. There's some nice sherry on here as well. And then I get some orchard fruits, a little bit of apple, a little bit of pear. It's also just very slightly floral. Then I get a little bit of orange as well. And then I get, I mean, how can something smell heavy? That sounds weird, but it just smells like dense or heavy. I get that kind of like slightly funky, a little bit of a sulfuric note in there. All right, let's go on the palette. Cheers. Mm, up front, it's really sweet. Then I think a little bit of that sherry comes through. It's a little bit drying on the back of the palate. That heaviness comes through. The honey that I was on, uh, that was on the nose is definitely on the palate. Also, there's a nice amount of barrel spice kind of on the back end. A little bit on the front as well. There's a little bit of pepper, which I really, really enjoy actually. Kind of, it's sweet, but then there's like a little bit of pepper, a little bit of barrel spice. I'm also getting a little bit, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I'm getting a little bit of dark chocolate on this as well. Let's go for another sip. Cheers. Yeah, there's a little bit of smoke. I don't know if it's the sulfuric kind of character or if it's from the sherry cask. I think I'm leaning more towards that kind of sulfur character. It's got, I would say, medium to long finish. It's got a really, really wonderful weight. It's a little bit oily even. This is a pretty fantastic dram, so I'm going to finish it up, and I'll be right back with my recommendation. This is a yummy dram, but it's probably not the best starter whiskey. It's got good flavor, good texture, and a decent ABV. It kind of reminds me of a heavier version of Aberfeldy. It's got that fruit and that honey, but that worm tub dense character really shows up in this whiskey. It's not too expensive, and I think this will be a staple on the shelf for a while. If you like this and want to spend almost triple the price, you could go for a Craig Allocky 17 year. If you want to branch out from Craig Allocky, you could go for an Aberfeldy or maybe a Compass Box the Spaniard, which are on the lighter side. But if you want something heavier, you could go for something like the Mortlac 12 year. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whiskey Central. Next week, I'll be reviewing something that my patrons vote on, so if you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. 
I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave it a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Damn it. It was built by the famous architect Charles Doig. Mmm, damn it. It was built by the famous architect Charles Doig. Hmm. Built by the... Hmm. <laughs> I can't get it. Oh my god. It was built by the famous architect Charles Doig. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sold off to Bacardi. First single malt was released from Craig Allakey. And in. I keep wanting to say, and in 10 years. No. Two spirit stills. Fuck. I'm also tired. It's 7 o'clock right now. Usually I'm like. Getting ready to go to bed because I'm a freaking wimp. <laughs> We're done. We're fucking done, mate. Yeah, I when I was doing this review, I for some reason I smelled this and I was like, this kind of smells like Aberfeldy, and I think that's that's almost one of the. Hey, I, I I need to pour some Aberfeldy now. Hold on one sec. A little Aberfeldy twelve. Let me get a glass. I, I haven't had Everfeldy in a while, to be fair, but this just seemed super honey. Like, super, and it's got a little bit of that sherry, and the 12, the Everfeldy 12 has a little bit of sherry, so this is 40%, and this is 46%, and uses worm tubs, but yeah, it's kind of like a heavier Everfeldy, I think. Obviously, there's other stuff going on, too. It's not, like, exactly Everfeldy. Yeah, this one smells slightly sweeter, a little bit, like earthy kind of like fall leaves almost this one has a little bit more of that sulfuric a little bit more orchard fruit on this one I think it's kind of leaning in the orchard fruit direction okay I'm gonna go on the palate cheers much more honey on the Aberfeldy. There is a lot of honey on Craig Allakey, but I think there's other stuff going on. And comparatively, going from 46 to 40%, the Aberfeldy just seems really thin on the palate. It's a, I still enjoy this. I think this is a great starter dram, either for the night or beginning your journey, for sure. This is one of the really good ones, I think. But uh, yeah, I like the Craig Allakey more. I like the kind of sulfuric side of it, like the heavier side of it. It's kind of a nice, nice balance between sweet and kind of like a dense heaviness. So there you go.